Hello everyone, um, it's me again. My name is Anchi Wu. In yesterday's tutorial, we learned about model fitting. Today, I'm going to extend it and talk about generalized linear model. Again, a self-introduction is uh, my name is Anchi Wu. I work as a postdoc researcher at Columbia with William Paninsky and John Cunningham. I did my PhD at Princeton with Jonathan Pillow. Uh, my research interest covers neurosensory encoding, latent variable models for large-scale neural recordings, and from my decoding behavior analysis. My modeling interests are probabilistic graphic model, Gaussian process latent variable or dynamic model, Bayesian deep learning, and so forth. Okay, so here is the um, day four team. Um, slide. I'm really delighted to be a part of this team to give the lecture on the tutorial part. And this is a very awesome team. Um, then, and this is really a teamwork contributed by all these great members. Okay, Christina has done a great job introducing GLM in the first day tutorial, uh, in the first session today. Um, starting from this tutorial, uh, we will go deep into it. Here is the roadmap of today's tutorial. In the first session, we will revisit linear regression model, show how to use it for spec training, uh, spec training encoding. Then we'll introduce generalized linear model and Poisson GLM for the same spec training encoding problem. In the second part, we will continue introducing another example of GLM, which is logistic regression. Finally, we will talk about regularization for GLMs inducing uh, including ridge regression and lasso regression. Hopefully, by the end of the day, you will be familiar with GLMs and know how to code in Python to feed these models. In the first tutorial, I will um, do a quick review of multiple linear regression model introduced on day three and show how to use it for spectrum encoding. On day three, we talked about the multiple linear model. We can write it in the vector form for one data point i as the following. y is um, the neural response, theta is a vector of all linear weights, x is a vector collecting multiple stimulus features such as orientation, contrast, and etc. i is the i is the index of data points and n is the number of total data points. We could also build it up to a, the matrix form for all data points as y is equal to x multiplying theta, especially the capital X is called design matrix. The columns correspond to features and rows co correspond to data points. We also talk about the linear model with Gaussian additive noise. Here is the vector form. Eta is a Gaussian noise vector. Um, uh, eta is a Gaussian noise with mean zero and variance sigma squared. And here is the matrix form. Bold eta is a vector of Gaussian noise. Each element in this bold eta is an IID sample from the zero mean Gaussian. We can use such a linear Gaussian model to do spectrum encoding from stimulus. In this problem, the input x is stimulus and output y is the spike train, is the spike count. Um, the task is to predict neural spikes from stimuli at all time points. Here is the mathematical formulation. We have lambda t is equal to theta multiplying xt. xt contains a vector of stimulus uh, within a window, shown here, ended at time t. The size of the window is d. Theta is called linear filter. Here is um, how it will look like. It integrates stimulus a long time within the window to generate a spike. Lambda t is the continuous fan rate value at time t. This expression can be expanded as the sum of theta, theta i multiplying x t minus i within the window. The spike count y t at time t is the fan rate lambda t um, plus the Gaussian noise eta t. Here's an example of y t. The model that achieves such an encoding task is known as temporal filtering model. The goal is to estimate the linear filter theta so as to understand that um, what temporal pattern of the stimulus triggers the neuron to spike. We can walk through the data one time being at a time and see how xt and yt change at different time points. 
Here we show theta x t and y t when t is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. We can see x t is a sliding window, y t is the binary spike count at the end of the window, and theta t um, and theta is the same window when slide is the same parameter when sliding the window. We can also build it up to the matrix form, um, like this. We can see now each row of the design matrix correspond to a sliding window. Similar to the derivation on day three, we can calculate optimal theta by minimizing the mean squared error. We differentiate it and set the gradient to be zero. Then we arrive at this closed form expression for theta. Here, um, in this temporal filtering model, we call x, t tra x transpose x as the stimulus covariance and x transpose y as spec triggered average, which is SAT for short. Similarly, we can use MLE to obtain the optimal theta. Before that, we will remind ourselves that each element in the vector theta eta, follows the same Gaussian distribution with zero mean and variance is equal to sigma squared. Then the log likelihood function is written as this, where t is the number of time points and d is the window size. Again, this is a revisit of derivation on day three, thus I'm not expanding the derivation here. We can still differentiate the log likelihood function and set it to be zero. We obtain the final closed form solution for theta. Again, as um, stated on day three, the MLC and MLE solutions are the same when the noise is Gaussian. One important concept I want to expand a little bit here is the spike triggered average. It is also a popular estimator for the filter, which is written as x transpose multiplying y, where y is a binary vector with ones for spikes and zeros for no spikes. What is the calculating? Here are some animations. Again, we have the input stimulus and output spike, right? The model picks a window of stimulus right before the first spike and moves on to the next spike and all the way to the last spike. We then align these windows and take the average. The average stimulus within the window would give us theta STA. In general, theta MLE is a better estimator than theta STA, but um, the spike trigger average estimator doesn't involve the matrix inversion. In the following notebook, you will formulate the design matrix from the stimulus vector, fit the linear Gaussian model to the stimulus and spike count data, uh, predict spike counts using the fitted linear Gaussian model. Hope you enjoy that.